Today I'm going to show you how to make this absolutely adorable little basket. It doesn't take as much yarn as you'd think and what we're going to do is hold three strands of a regular four weight acrylic yarn together. We start with a granny square base. Once we finish our the base of our granny square, so you can make your base as small or as large without going too crazy as you want to get the base and then we single crochet in the round all the way around for as tall or as high as we want the sides of our little basket. Then we'll crochet this optional little handle and I have just taken some flower appliques and sewn them on the base of our handles and you get a really nice little basket. These are perfect as Easter baskets, decor around this time of year, and also for May Day baskets, which is coming up in a few weeks. For this project, I'm using a large size crochet hook. This is an eight millimeter. I recommend anywhere from a seven to a nine, depending on how tightly you crochet. And for the yarn is three strands held together. And you can see I've got a little bit of purple in there, which is just this sort of plum color. The other two are these variegated sort of blue greens. And adding that purple in really sort of makes everything pop. I also have a basket that I made using these two yarns held together along with a beige. And if you've been watching my channel, you'll you will have seen that basket on my super stash busting blanket project. That basket is where I hold all of my stash yarn for that project. For this tutorial, I'm going to be using these two held together as well as this pink. So I wanted to mix it up again and see how these three colors play together. But really, you can't go wrong. You can have three solid colors held together and you'll still get this sort of alternating pattern. So when you start this project, you want to make sure that you are pulling from the center as much as possible. That makes it much easier to use the three strands held together. And I like to sort of place them all in front of me and grab those ends, kind of line them up here. So I've got my two variegated. I'm going to find the end in the center of the pink and just line everything up like that. To start the basket, you want to make sure that you're holding the three strands. I've got them pretty close um, at the end here. Leave a little bit of a tail so we can weave those in. Do a magic ring. Make sure that you grab all of those strands, those first strands under your hook and pull up the other three strands. Three strands is equal to one stitch. So always remember that your three strands is really one strand. We're going to chain three and just work slowly because working with three strands held together takes a little bit of getting used to. I'm going to work two double crochets into the center. So I want to yarn over and remember that is one strand or one stitch. Pull up the three strands, yarn over, make sure you grab all three strands, back through the first two stitches and back through the rest. And those are your 
first two, your chain three and your first double crochet. Going to work one more double crochet into that ring. And once you remember and get in your mind that those three strands on your hook are one stitch or equal to one strand, then you'll be on your way. So there's my first granny shell cluster. I'm going to chain one for the corner. In this pattern, I'm only chaining one in the corners and I will not be chaining any in between granny shell clusters um, on the sides, only in the corners. And that is because I really want a tight stitch for my base. If you tend to crochet really, really tightly, you may want to put two uh, chains in between your corners. Um, it's just sort of a personal preference. It really doesn't matter in the overall scheme of things for this pattern. I'm going to put three more double crochets right into that ring. I'm already liking how these colors are working together. Here's my next three double crochets. I'm going to chain one. I'm going to work another cluster, so three more double crochets. There's my next cluster. And as a note, if you have trouble keeping track of the corners, stitch markers are wonderful for this. You can just put them in that chain one space and you'll know exactly where your corners are. And this will be helpful further on down the line in this project so you know where your corners are when you're working in the round to build up your sides. Chain one, we're going to do one more cluster. So three double crochets. Chain one and slip stitch into the top of that first chain three you did and Slip stitching into a stitch that has three strands held together can be a little challenging. So just go slow, find, find the stitch, and just work that slip stitch. And there you've got your little four shells to start the base. And I'm going to pull that really tight. And now you can't really tell that it's a square, but I do have my chain ones in for the corners. And here's a, where it's a good idea to put in those stitch markers. And like I said, you can do as many rounds as you can make your granny square base as large as you want. I don't recommend making a huge like blanket size square for this project, but you can make a really a fairly large size granny square um, it into a basket. For this next round, we're just going to work a granny square pattern. So I'm going to slip stitch over to my next space. I'm going to slip stitch into that space. And that is where I'm going to start. So I always want to start in a corner. Just makes this project a little bit easier going to chain three and work my granny pattern. Chain one for the corner and work three more double crochets right back into that corner space. 
Always make sure that you've got your three strands. Sometimes you'll miss one. But like I say with crochet, you can always kind of go back fairly easily and fix fix what's not right. Or you can just make it work. All right, so I've got my three, my corner, two double crochets here. Make sure I get all of my strands. I'm going to put another double crochet in and work those. And I've got the start of round two. Like I said, I am not going to chain one in between. So to get over to this corner, normally I would chain one. I'm not going to do that. I don't want too many large spaces in my base. I'm just going to work the corner shells over here. And you can see I've got a huge sort of start of a knot here. And those knots pop up more frequently when you're holding three strands together. So I've got my two double crochets. I'm going to work another double crochet and see you can already see I've got one extra loop there somehow. So I'm going to take those off, pull that through, and do that one again. There we go, chain one, and three double crochets. So I'm going to keep working my granny pattern for about four rows. I'm going to see how it looks, how big it is. Like I said, you can keep working your rounds until you get the base size that you want. So there's no real set um, size for this. It's, you know, if you wanted a two round little basket, go for it. If you wanted a six round granny basket, that works too. If you need a sort of a reminder on basic granny squares, I have a couple of granny square tutorials and I will link those in the description box below so you can check those out just to get a refresher um, if you need it. But basically the base is just a granny square and if you're familiar with granny squares, then this, this part will be pretty easy. The hardest part will be working with those three strands held together. And I find that because you have to crochet so tightly that your hands may stiffen up. So take breaks, kind of, you know, uh, wiggle your fingers, get a snack, get a drink, and then come back to it once your fingers sort of loosen up. Because the last thing you need is to get tense when you're crocheting. So I'm going to finish my square and I will show you how big it is and how many rounds I did. And then I will show you how to work up the sides. So I just finished that second round and I just wanted to remind you that you do not chain one to get over to your joining stitch over here. I am not joining, I'm not chaining one in between these shells on the side, only in the corners. So I'm just going to find that top stitch and slip stitch. And again, slip stitching, holding three strands together is a little bit of a challenge. So there's my first two rounds. I'm absolutely loving how the colors are working together. I think I'm going to do two more rounds, so a total of four granny square rounds, and then I will show you how to put the sides on. All right, so I finished up with my fourth round. I'm going to slip stitch into the top of that beginning uh, chain three. 
and we've got a nice size granny square. So you can always count your rows by counting those rounds. So there's our first round, second, third, and fourth. So I've done four granny square rounds. I'm going to start working the sides. So to get to the side, again, we're just going to slip stitch into this, to get to this corner. So I'm going to slip stitch into the next few stitches and slip stitch into that corner space. I'm going to chain one. We're going to work into every stitch all the way around. We're not going to be chaining, we're just going to be working all the way around. We're going to be working single crochets, so find that first stitch and make sure you get the entire stitch so it'll be like six strands of yarn for one stitch. And pull your yarn up and yarn over and finish your single crochet. Find the next stitch and work your single crochet. I recommend putting a stitch marker into this corner space here. That way, as you're working around, you will remember where you started. And this is especially helpful for the last final row of the sides. So I'm gonna keep working all the way around just single crochet and you want tight stitches so like I said work slow as you're getting the hang of it and if you feel like your hand is kind of tensing up and your arm and your shoulder and your neck take a break for a little bit stretch out your fingers and then come back to it once you loosen up a little bit because working three strands held together and working tightly, it it will tend to get to you in your, your fingers and your arms. So here is our first corner. That stitch is our chain one. To make it easy, I am just going to work right into that space. I'm going to find my next stitch and single crochet. So the corners, if you find that it's too hard to get your hook into that um, the chain that is over that space for your granny corner, then just work into the actual space. You just want to make sure that you're working one stitch in every stitch. So one single crochet in every stitch all the way around. And this will start to form our sides. You want to make sure you're not increasing or decreasing any. You don't want your sides to grow outward or inward. You want just a nice straight up um, side. Now here's my other corner. It's kind of hard to get into that stitch so I'm just going to work into the space. And then find the next stitch all the way around. Now when you get back to the corner that you started, you'll have these slip stitches that we did to get over to that corner and those stitches sometimes are a little bit hard to work into. So 
So just do the best you can. This is the first row of that basket, so it won't be super noticeable if you're not getting into all of the stitch. As long as you can get into a good chunk of the stitches, especially using a larger hook and three strands. It's not easy. But once you get this row, this first establishing single crochet row done, it's smooth sailing. One more single crochet to do here. And now I'm back. So we're not going to join with a slip stitch. And this is our chain one, so it's technically a false stitch. It doesn't really doesn't really exist. I'm going to continue. I'm going to skip that false stitch. Let's see if I can show you again, get my hook out of here. I'm going to skip that false stitch and work right into the next stitch and continue with my single crochets into every stitch all the way around. And now it should be much easier just to go single crochet all the way around. So another note, this is the bottom of our basket. I like to have this on the inside. So you don't have to do this at this point, but you can sort of flip your work around. So that's on the inside and now you're working. Here's the outside and now you're working around like this. Okay. But if you're just more comfortable like this, you can always flip it at the end. I just like to have that visually on the inside so I can keep track of what I'm doing. So I'm going to go ahead and continue working this for at least probably 10, 15 rows, single crochet all the way around. I'm going to stick a slip or a stitch marker into one of these stitches here. So I know that's the corner that I started working. Once you've worked around for as many rows as you want. So I worked about nine rows, I think, and you can count them. If you look on the bottom, here's your base. And you can see where you first started to single crochet. Just count those rows. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I have nine rows. I'm going to now put a handle across. This is optional, so if you don't want to have a handle and you just kind of want to have a, a little square basket with no handles, you can work to your last stitch of that corner. So what I do is I just, I know I put this stitch marker in, this is my corner that I started on. You can just kind of eyeball it or even look inside and find that corner granny chain one space that we did and just run your finger up, find a stitch. It doesn't have to be perfect and do your single crochets over to that stitch and then just slip stitch and you can fasten off. I'm going to finish my two single crochets over here to get to that corner space. Just eyeball it. And here's where I would fasten off. Now, I want to work three stitches in the middle of this edge. So I'm going to slip stitch over until I get to the center. To find the center, find the stitches on your very corners. You can even put stitch markers in and then start 
you know, counting over. And then once you get to the three stitches in the middle, that's where you want to start working the handle. And again, it's very helpful to use stitch markers. I'm just going to eyeball it for this tutorial. So I'm going to use those three stitches. One, two, three. So I'm going to slip stitch up until I get to this stitch. And like I said, stitch markers, very helpful for this part of the, the project. We are going to put a half double crochet into the next three stitches. So I'm going to yarn over and work a half double crochet. Yarn over, half double crochet in the next. Yarn over and half double crochet into that next stitch. So I have half double crocheted into those three middle stitches. I'm going to chain one, turn my work, and work a half double crochet into those three stitches again. Yarn over, work into that first stitch, and do your half double crochet. Yarn over, Work into that next stitch, half double crochet, yarn over, and find that very first stitch that you did, and half double crochet. Chain one, and turn. So you can see I'm starting that handle. I'm going to work half double crochets, one in each of these three stitches, back and forth, back and forth, until I get a handle length that I'm happy with. Alright, so I have worked a little bit of a strap and I'm happy with that. I'm going to slip stitch it into the opposite side of my little basket. I wanted to give you some quick measurements. The sides are just about four inches, so it's four inches tall. And if we just carefully turn it over, the actual foundation granny square is about six inches. I worked in half double crochet for the strap and I worked about eight inches. Alright, so I've worked a strap that is about eight inches in half double crochet. We are now going to attach this to our little the other side of our little basket. So again, you can kind of count over or you can just eyeball it. In order to slip stitch this easier, you want to end on this side. So I'm going to do one more row. So chain one, turn my work, and I'm going to work another three uh, half double crochets. And working with these three strands can sometimes, it's tight sometimes. Those stitches can be more difficult to find. Okay, I'm going to chain one, line up where I want to put those stitches together. And kind of bump out your sides here. You can really tell where the center is. So I'm going to turn back this way and I'm just going to slip stitch into that first stitch that I want to join them together at that point.
and just a little lip stitch. I'm going to go into the next stitch. I'm going through all of those stitches, pull back through everything to slip stitch, go in through that last stitch, all of those strands of yarn which can be difficult to get through, and into the next stitch on my basket and draw through all of those loops and through the rest of them. So I like to leave my hook in there for a second, straighten out my basket, make sure that it looks okay, and then you can fasten off. So once you're happy with the way you have attached the strap, and sometimes working with those three strands, like I said, it's difficult and you might find, oh, that you dropped one of those strands along the way, not a problem. Just take this out and do it again. So I'm just going to fasten off. So here is my finished basket. It is super cute. I just love it. Um, using the three strands together, you really get a sturdy basket. And I just love starting with the square, the granny square base. First of all, because I hate working in the rounds when I have to keep adding stitches every other stitch and I lose track and it's it becomes a nightmare for me so I love using the granny square I know how to make granny squares I know how to count stitches in granny squares I know how to increase in granny squares once I have my granny square as big as I want then I can just single crochet all the way around building up those sides adding on a really simple half double crochet little strap for my basket. And if you want to spice it up a little bit, you can make little flowers or any applique and just sew them on. You can put them on the sides. You can make a whole bunch and make a, uh, a flower strap and just sew them on. You can use any color you want. Just love how these variegated yarns worked up together. So now I've got two really cute baskets. I'm going to add some flowers onto this one and then I'll have a nice little set. Thanks so much for watching everyone. I hope you enjoyed this little basket tutorial. Have a wonderful weekend and until next time, happy crocheting everyone. Bye!